for Niazem Betov, this will be a classic matchup between a boxer and a puncher. Always makes for a great show. So Adibek Niazem Betov, just 22 years of age. Both these boxers, same age, similar height. But as our expert in the box is pointing out, different boxing styles. Confirmation of the five judges. To remind you, the highest and lowest scores are disregarded, and the three that remain are averaged. And uh, Gorne of Poland, our referee for this light heavy. 81 kilo division. Keep it in the red corner. The Kazak boxer is in the blue. This is one that many have been looking forward to. A strong uh, Kazakhstani contingent in the crowd. And Gorni begins the bout. Three, three, three minute rounds. Nice, right out of the gate, De La Cruz, not afraid to mix it up with the Kazaki boxer. He threw a nice one-two combination from a good range, a safe range, and scored two points right out of the beginning. The chance of Kazakhstan, you hear him here, the Aliyev Sports Complex. It's gonna get loud in here, Nick. It's gonna continue to get louder. You know what's up next. We've got two big favorites coming up next. Heavyweight and the super heavyweight, both from right here in Azerbaijan. But right now, it's a Kazakhi boxer that the crowd is cheering for. Well, uh, Julio Lacruz just needs to be a little careful because he's perfectly prepared. He looks very happy with his hands down, a little bit of footwork, a little bit of dancing. But he'll soon reel that in if uh, Niazim Betov can connect with his big right hand. Yeah, La Cruz needs to be careful to not get too cute. He's in against a big puncher here. As you rightly pointed out, Nick Niazembetov has already stopped two, one by KO and one by retirement, and he's looking to do it again. It's actually a commonality that we've seen, a, a common denominator, if you will, about, amongst the Cubans in this tournament, right? They're all kind of real confident they're real smooth and and hot and loose just like the culture down in Cuba it's a real hot lovely fast culture and these guys bring that style into the ring but they just have to be careful they don't want to get caught one punch could turn the tide nice right hand sneaky right hand by La Cruz he's still boxing with his hands down way too low Nick Well, Adi Back needs to take advantage of that. And he has him bet off. Still to find his rhythm here, still to settle. And as we said in some of the earlier bats, just need to be careful not to show the Cuban too much respect. the jab in there a good counter punch from uh, the Kazakh boxer there's the end of the first round very evenly matched very close and I think we've yet to see either of these boxers open up in full the president of Azerbaijan enjoying the boxing here and the entertainment right there he's having a small chat with the president of the Kazakhstani Boxing Federation sitting between himself and Dr. Wu of Aiba. So a lot of dignitaries, world boxing dignitaries in the crowd here this evening. And the two uh, Azerbaijani hopefuls will be coming up later on here in the Haydar Aliyev Stadium in the heavyweight and super heavyweight divisions. Let's focus on the light heavy first round scores for now.
For me, difficult to separate the two in that first round. Do the judges agree with us? Well, for the first time in a while, they do. And it's all square, 4-4. Four, four. The Cuban boxer in the red headgear and gloves. The Kazakh boxer in the blue. Not much lateral movement from either boxer. Nice overhand right by La Cruz to start the action in round number two. Very much a cat and mouse game here between these two. It's a little rough in there, a little tussle in the center of the ring, and the referee is going to keep a close eye on the action. Watch how the southpaw Kazaki boxer and the orthodox style Cuban are tangling their two front feet. It happens often with the clashing of these styles. Again, the key for each of these boxers to keep their lead foot on the outside of their opponents, better for mobility around the ring, and they want to circle towards the opponent's blind side away from the power rear hand. See, right now the Cuban walking into the power shot of the Kazaki, not the right direction. He needs to be going in the other direction or he'll walk right into a big one. And remember, this sport of fisticuffs can be stark and unforgiving. Well, Yazembetov has been a little frustrated because he hasn't been able to really unleash that uh, big left hand of his. See how close he's coming right there. Yazembetov looking to load up with that left hand. Just a minute to go in the second round, and again, it's difficult to win your colors or take sides on either of the boxes right now. And less dancing, more boxing, the caution from the referee. And I'm quite surprised, Castle. I'd expected a few more exchanges, but uh, for now, both boxers quite cautious. Yeah, I believe Niaz and Betha would like to get it on in the center of the ring. He's pushing the action, but again, the Cubans are just, they're really elusive. Look at the, the quick turns, the lateral movement. Now the Cubans starting to, to show some more, some more moves in there. It's a big right hand by La Cruz, just when Niaz and Betha was not expecting it. And that's one of the best blows of this second round. He followed it up with another one, not quite as powerful, but certainly hit the target. We're counting down, four, three, two, one. And those two blows just in time could mark the difference between Cuba and Kazakhstan. Certainly the last 25 seconds, a much better round for the Cuban boxer than the Kazakh boxer. Their instructions from the ring, quite clear. I'm going to see two clear scoring punches right here by the Cuban. One's a big left right there. Looks like he got it and was able to lean back and avoid the counter hook by the Kazaki boxer. And here's that other big right hand. Unexpected. The lead right, it's a tough punch to throw. It's a tough punch to land. But the Cuban executing it flawlessly. I think the judges were with you all the way there, Castle. They agree with your technical assessment of that second round. And it's now four points ahead for... La Cruz of Cuba. This could be the second goal for the Cubans here. <laughs> and he's really got to raise his game here now. He has Embetov. He really does need to. And he's trying. But of course, as you've been guiding us throughout these championships castle if you start to get a little bit more 
aggressive and a little bit more ready to mix it, you leave yourself exposed to the counter. That's right. That's one of the problems or one of the beautiful things, shall I say, about this sport is in order to throw punches, you need to remove your hands from the guard of about your head and face, and you actually need to take risks. You need to risk getting hit in order to hit your opponent. One punch, as we say, can turn these bouts. Such is the risk that all boxers take, Nick, as this manly art has always had a Faustian pact. Well, that Yizambetov now needs to start raising the tempo. And he needs to start scoring consistently, quickly. He does need to gamble a little. He does need to drop the hands. He needs to bait the Cuban. And he needs to try and put some of those big punches in that have had two, three contests stopped earlier in the competition. Another caution from the referee for the Kashet boxer. Good combination from Adibek. Cute right hand by the Cuban. He seems to be landing that at will. Kazaki back boxer would be well served to keep that left hand higher so as to better defend against those lead right hands of the Cuban. It's an interesting thing, this boxing game. Oftentimes, even when you think you're keeping your hands up, they're not quite high enough. The difference can be just a matter of inches, and the shoulders tend to get very tired after a few rounds, not only of throwing punches, but also, uh, also of, of blocking punches and getting hit on the shoulders themselves. And oftentimes you see a boxer drop the hands just a little bit below the chin. They don't even realize it. Their corners often yell for them to get their hands up. Look at the left hand of the Kazaki boxer. It's right below his chin, and that's how the Cuban is landing with those big right hands. And the Cuban is still able to Dance his way around those punches from the Kajak boxer. Remember, he came into this third round a four-point advantage. Good exchange and a good score from both boxers. But look at the clock. It's going against the Kazakhstani boxer. And uh, Yezembetov really does need to have an explosive final. 25 seconds here. And it looks like, and if not, it looks like Cuba will take its second goal again. Another good shot from the Cuban. So often deceptive, the Cuban boxers, they make it look so easy. And believe you me, this is the result of hours in the gym, weeks and months of training and preparation, because it's so difficult to see why Niaz and Betov was frustrated, was unable to box the way he boxed in the semis, box the way he was in the quarterfinals, and that's due to the skill of the Cuban Nothing to do with the Kazakhstan boxer. Yeah, I mean, we've been saying it all tournament, these Cubans. They just, and it's not just this tournament, as you rightly pointed out, some of the greatest Olympic champions the world has ever seen have come from the place where the world championships began, La Habana, Cuba. Here comes the decision from the judges. There it is, the second gold medal at these finals for Cuba. And the men's light heavy division has gone to Julio La Cruz from Camagay, 17 to 13. Well, they tied them in that third and final round, but the work had been put in in the second from Cruz. That four-point advantage in carrying him through in the third for that decisive win in the light heavy division. Another great result for the Cubans. And again, another fantastic display of 
amateur boxing at its finest. The more we watch the slow-mos of this bout, the more you see the skill of the Cuban to deal with one of the strongest and most prolific hitters of the